Hello and welcome to Better Cam. In today's video, we are going to be looking at part three of the Mark II stalwart restoration project. Now, I've already done a couple of videos on the Mark II, how I first got it, and taking out this engine, which is the petrol Rolls Royce eight cylinder original B81 engine. And in today's video, we're going to be fitting the turbo diesel, which I have already had running, and it should go in no problem. The turbo, turbo diesel actually came out of a Mark II so it shouldn't be too bad a job to put in. I'm once again using my little mini digger here to lift the engine in. It is a little bit on the small side, it only just lifts the engine, but uh, we should be okay. I'm not sure how it will be when we, when we boom out with it, just when it gets further away from the machine. So we will have to see, but we are hopefully now going to lift this in and see if we can get it aligned. Okay, so the converter plate is all now fitted to the gearbox in the vehicle. So this will allow the new Bedford bell housing, which is right here. This is now going to be bolted straight onto this converter plate. All we need to really do is just put on this, which is the converter for the new clutch thrust bearing. So that fits right on here. Gets all bolted on. There's the new bearing for the new clutch arrangement and we should be good to go to fit this new engine. Just have one last look in the back before it goes in. And what we've done in here is the bell housing is all fitted now to the converter plate and you can see here the, the clutch thrust bearing is all in place I've greased it all right up so that will hopefully the spline shaft will hopefully slide nicely into the clutch unit on the engine if it's all aligned right and then also what we've done because this whole gearbox is actually hinged slightly I've actually hooked it up with a little lever hoist here off the high ab so I can actually adjust the height right here of the whole thing if it's not quite aligned we can actually winch it up slightly manually which is really useful and with a bit of luck the engine will now slide straight in this space right will it go high enough to get in the back we are about to find out just put the blade down very very dodgily and using the blade I did manage to get it high enough and I actually ended up pulling the engine up as high as it would possibly go with the machine with the blade and then I actually rolled the vehicle back underneath it. So we are now in a position where we can start to lower it and hopefully guide it in on its mounts. Right, the key to it now is to be able to slide this up at the right height and then that little spline shaft there is going to go right in the centre of the clutch housing, hopefully. So yeah, we just need to Adjust the height of this now, adjust the height of this, get the two together and pinch them up and we are away. And I'm now able to get right down in here with the big bar and give it a little push from here. This is obviously a lot easier with two people but uh, it's a weekday today and there's no one else around so that's unfortunate but it can still be done. It just takes a little bit more of uh, toing and froing but we're getting there. Just going to give it a little bar here now. This way. Oh. Just doing the final tightening now and I'm just using these bell housing bolts to actually pull the engine up. So it's a very small gap. I know that the spline shaft is engaged and I'm just tightening these up and it's just drawing the whole engine back where it needs to be. And then hopefully those rear engine mounts should line up as well. All being well. Right, we are getting somewhere now. We've just got to connect up the hydraulics and the air now. So this is where the hydraulic pump is. Going to get this connected up before putting the alternator back on. And the air, the air compressor on this one is on this side. So we need to connect those up. I've just been down to see Simon down at SC Hydraulics, who's kindly 
made me up some nice new hoses both for the hydraulic feed and return and for the compressed air as well all with the right fittings on so we're going to get them fitted now get them hooked up and then we can sort the electrics and we can actually give the engine a try right this is all connected up now this is all connected to the gearbox it should be all ready to go we've had this engine running outside of the vehicle but i haven't actually run it had it running in the vehicle yet so hopefully everything works and in theory we should be able to drive this out of the shed Right, we have now got the stalwart out of the shed and we're going to be having a play with a crane. We haven't really used the crane on this much yet because the petrol engine wasn't reliable enough for it to keep going. So now that we've got the diesel in, we can have a good play and see what the crane is capable of. Got Tom with me today, yeah. going to be giving me a hand with the rigging. In the last episode, we looked at the paintwork, how I sandblasted it all and finished everything. I've done a few other things since then. I've put the lights back on done a few little tidying up bits and also importantly I've put the windows back in so all the glass windows are back in other than these mid ones which are just stacked in there I haven't put them back in yet because I was actually doing I did a little bit of respraying here and I it just saved masking taping them up by not putting them in uh, we have also filled in the areas of damage that were here there was some there was some damage and there's some sorry some rust holes they've all been filled in and painted over and yeah the whole the whole vehicle is now starting to look really good looks very smart and is now usable and it's going to be very good fun using this around here to lift bits and pieces around assuming it, it all works okay right let's do it right we've done a lot to the engine and we've got it all very good i haven't done an awful lot yet to the cab inside here so there's still numerous panels out and I had to free up the clutch and blah de blah de blah the windows are still out but it is usable this is where the operator stands to control it in this driver's hatch and here's your three controls these should have knobs on really have to get some little round knobs for them but there are your three controls that's your slew left and right that one there is your secondary bit on the crane that's the smaller section and this one here is your main boom that's the main up and down it's actually printed on this little brass plaque here as well you can only just see it there but the instructions are on that plaque. I've got to clean that up nicely because I've got a bit of paint on that. So yeah, we've just filled it up with oil. I've got a few slight leaks on it and I have given it a little bit of a test, but we haven't load tested it in any way yet. So it's going to be very interesting to see what that is capable of lifting. For a wave in time. Extension. So the extenders on these are actually done manually 
So the, this pin here is removed, which finish they're taking out now. And then this piece here should actually come out to extend it, which means you've got a much greater range of picking things up, but you can't lift quite as much weight. Can we get a hammer? Oh, look at that, look. She's free. <laughs> now the question is, is there a stop on the end of this? <laughs> oh, that's cool, there's all different different holes for different there must be a stop on the end of that isn't there? find out won't we? <laughs> we will find out here's another one there we are look <laughs> it's all the crap in there that's just binding it tight that's all it's all the stuff that's just you need to put a bit of grease in there yeah I need so so that's pretty cool what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be giving this a test and the thing that we thought we'd test it on is over here I got this massive gun right here so this is a World War One four inch gun which actually came off a salvage ship this is actually really really heavy I don't know whether or not the high ab will lift this or not this weighs I don't quite know maybe I'd say I'd say two to two and a half tons possibly more not 100% on that, never actually weighed it. I know that it is very heavy. My mini digger won't even look at it. So it will be quite a good test. And uh, yeah. Vinny is the lifting lifting safety officer on this one. It'll be fine, everything will be fine. All the straps are tested when they, were <laughs> when they were new. Right, I'm gonna get the machine over. Let's lift the mount out and then we'll try and pick the gun up and we'll try and lift the gun onto the mount. Face forwards just to get the mount out if we can reach, of course. Just for the crane, I just hope that some of these hoses don't explode while they're next to my head. <laughs> She's away. So, no problem at all with the mount. I don't know how heavy that is, it's probably not that heavy. Probably there would do us actually. I reckon if we come down there that would do us because that means the gun will be slightly in, in a little bit. <laughs> I can feel the whole thing lurching. I think we may have reached our limit. Yeah, I could feel they were. So, I think that's about as far as we can lift. I don't think it's a very good idea to to pursue that much more. Look at how it turned over else. The gun is too heavy, but we kind of knew that may be an issue because it is very, very heavy gun. So, let's find something a little bit lighter we can lift. So, we're going to try something a little bit smaller now. We're gonna try my little Kawasaki Mule, which is a lot lighter. It's under a ton. Should lift this no problem at all. Well, as you can see, that's lifted that, no problems whatsoever. I'm not actually too sure how, how heavy these little Kawasaki mules are, but uh, I'm not in close either, so that's a good little test for that. Be handy when we go to work on this Vinto, if we've got to do anything to the underneath. We give it a service while we're here. Yes! <laughs> do a few jobs to the brakes, isn't it? But yeah, no, I'm really pleased with that actually. That's a, that's a really good test for it. 
Whether or not it will lift the Abbott pack or not, I don't know, because that is the next big project we want to do is we want to pull the Abbott pack back out. So that will be the, the real good test for it. I'll have to get very, very close to that. But no, that's lifted that well. Happy with that. And everything seems to be working well. Right, that is both the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 now out the shed, all fully working. And I just thought it's nice to put them side by side. And you can really easily see now the comparison in the windows. You can see the, how easy it is to tell the difference between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. So this is the Mark 1. You can see the windows on the front there compared to the Mark 2 where they've extended these fronts and these sides with these little extra bits in the corner just for a little bit better visibility. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. There's actually loads of other differences within the vehicle, but that's the main visual one. And yeah, that's both these vehicles now fully working, which is really great to have them both, both running, both with diesel engines as well. I'll fire them up now and we can compare the two engines. Right, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. That is the Mark II Stalwart Crane project, now fully up and running with its diesel engine. And I'm really pleased with that. That's all working really nicely. That's going to be really, really useful here for lifting bits and pieces. And as I said briefly, the next project is to get the Abbott pack out. So I'm not even sure if that crane will actually lift this Abbott pack, but this engine needs to come out. It's got a really bad oil leak. It's got to come out. So the next video will be lifting that out, getting that going again. And you never know, I might finally be able to get all three main vehicles here up and running all at the same time. So that'd be really good. So yeah, thanks for watching and we will catch you again soon for more videos.